welcome. Thank you for joining us. Just a couple of housekeeping things to take care of before we get started. Um, as I just mentioned, this session is going to be recorded and it will be sent out to um, our MSU um, you know, universe. So just keep that in mind. Um, and if you would, please stay on mute during the duration of this conversation. If you have a question, which we definitely want you to ask questions, we want this to be super interactive so that you guys get the most out of it that you can. Um, but if you have a question, throw it in the chat or just come off mute and ask your question of any of the panelists. Um, I have kind of noted which of us are panelists and I'm the host, but we're, we're gonna do a quick round of introductions too. Um, so thank you again. My name is Liz Rich and I'm the Director of Strategic Partnerships and Initiatives at the Feliciano Center for Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Montclair State University. And thanks for joining us in our latest workshop for MSU's Future Founder Series, where we're having really, you know, conversations that apply to the budding entrepreneur from how to effectively pitch your business to how to drive innovation within that business. So today we're so excited to hear from a group of past winners from our annual pitch competition. Um, this is where MSU students and alumni can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, can have a chance to, you know, come up with their most innovative business idea and pitch it to a group, a panel of judges for a chance to win cash prizes and industry support. So we're very excited to be with um, these folks here today. And uh, again, if throughout this conversation, you have a question, please come off mute, ask your question. Um, and we want to make it interactive. And, you know, I, I, the goal for today is really for to allow these folks uh, on on our panel to shed some light on how they applied for the pitch competition, how they prepared, and ultimately what it was like for them to win. And what, you know, exactly in uh, what the whole experience was like for them. So first off, I'll start with some quick introductions. Um, <clears throat> today we have Lisa Noessi. Do you wanna wave Lisa? So we see you. Yay. So Lisa Noessi, her business is called Mavo Care. And Lisa's prize back in 2019. Uh, we also have Dominique Lundy, give us a wave. Yay. Um, so Dominique's business is called Solos Foods and they won second prize last year. Uh, we also have Melissa Spiegelman, quick wave. Yay, Melissa. Her business is Garbage Wine and she won our female founders prize uh, last year as well. Uh, we'll have another panelist who's going to be joining us in progress. His name's George Garcia. His business, We Pace, won first prize in 2018. So welcome to all of our winners. So um, if you guys want to come off mute, because I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions, I think it would just be easier. So first question, and this is a, a question I have for all of you. Um, what inspired you to enter the pitch competition? And we can start, Melissa, since you're right here on you what you know what inspired you to enter the pitch competition was it the money i mean let's be honest that's mm -hmm. a huge driving force but would love to just hear quickly what inspired you to enter for me it was more about um finally finding a way to you know help save the environment i'm 20 and i've no i've always loved the environment but i've never known like what i can do to really make an impact so when james riley my, our co-founder for garbage wine came to me and was like melissa I want you on this, like this is how we're gonna cut down methane emissions. I was hooked and that's why we entered. But I will say that if there wasn't a cash prize, I probably wouldn't have entered. <laughs> Understandable, makes sense. What about you, Lisa? Um, same thing. So I actually had this business idea before I even entered the pitch class or even the pitch competition. Um, so this is a way, honestly, it was about the money. This is a way to fund my business idea. I had just come back from Columbia and I had this wonderful idea, but I didn't have any money for it. So, um, and it's actually really funny because um, I don't know if Sharon ever told you the story, but I was like the last person to ever join the pitch class, like uh, for that semester, I think it was uh, spring 2019. 
Um, and it happened by chance. Like I walked into her office and I was like, Hey, I really want to be in this class. And she's like, she's going on and she's like, it's full. I know it's full, but I'm going to double check anyway. And once she checked, someone had just dropped. So I feel like it was like fate in a weird way. Yeah, definitely. That's very cool. I had never heard that story. And <laughs> I'm Dominique, what about you? Hi everybody. Um, sorry, I have mine muted because I'm afraid of what background noise you'll hear. <laughs> but um, similar to Melissa, I do have like I did have a social mission, which was nutrition um, in communities of color, and um, I kind of had this idea for a, a really, really, really long time. But um, of course, like the pitch competition and the funds really does like propel your. Um, your business and your mission even more. So I joined uh, or I participated in the pitch competition one to start my business and to give it the boost that I needed. Great. Um, and do you guys, can you do just quickly for context? Um, I, I realized that people should know just, you know, what, what you pitched, you know, your, your quick elevator pitch, what your business is about, would love to hear that. So again, Melissa, if you want to start off, what, what is Garbage One? So Garbage One is our way to save the world one glass at a time. So instead of your traditional wine company, we do not use grapes and we do not grow our own produce. We actually get our produce from struggling farmers. We purchase their food, uh, not only to help them, you know, to put some more money in their pocket, but to also help the environment because food waste is the third leading cause of methane pollution. So we take their fruit, the fruit that would have gone into landfills thrown out because it's too ugly or too bruised, and we turn it into beautiful wine. Awesome. All right, Lisa, what, what is Mavo Care? So uh, Mavo Care is a, a personal care and feminine supplement line. Um, the idea was created because uh, I personally, I worked at a gynecologist, but I personally would experience uh, recurring yeast infections and bacterial mm -hmm. vaginosis um, due to different uh, times in my cycle. And I knew this was, because I worked at a gynecologist, I knew this was a, a problem for many, many women. Um, and I went out to Colombia and discovered an herb that really, really helped me. And I formulated my own wash and entered it in the pitch competition. And that's what I pitched with. And the rest is history. Awesome. And, is history. and Dominique, what is Solo's food? Foods, sorry. Yeah, uh, Solo's food is a ethnic meal prep service. And we offer flavorful, healthy foods from Latin America, um, the S American South and the Caribbean. Perfect. All right. So, you know, we're at the stage now where people, you know, are interested in, in applying for the pitch competition. They, you know, they think they have an idea, but they're not sure. So just one, you know, I feel like hesitancy and doubt is kind of, you know, baked into this. So I'm just curious if any of you had any hesitancy to apply. Obviously, Lisa, you were like, kind of coming into things late in the game, you could have easily just said, I, I can't do this, this, this isn't worth it, or I'm not ready or whatever. So just curious to, you know, give some perspective on how you overcame any hesitancy you had. So um, a big thing for me was, this is a pretty intimate subject. And it's, it's something that's pretty uh, out there, <laughs> and uh, scary to pitch with, in my opinion, because it is a personal problem for me, but it's also a personal problem for a lot of women. Um, I think that was kind of like my hesitancy because it, um, it was just a, a, I was coming from a place of personal issues that is, it can be embarrassing for a lot of women. Um, but other than that, yes, I was late in the game and um, actually it really, I don't know how to explain it. I feel like it was kind of fate um, because I ran to Shan Waters and like pretty much begged her to be in the class. And I just had a feeling that this would be a really like fruitful experience for me and, and my business and the idea. And it's something to bring it to fruition. So um, that's why I was hesitant. And I also was like in the game. So it's kind of a combination of everything. I still think it's still fate, like still in my head. I'm like, it, it was just all fate. <laughs> It was meant to be. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Dominique or Melissa, were either one of you hesitant to apply or did you know you were going to do it the whole time? 
I got to say, I wasn't necessarily hesitant to apply, but once I did apply, my mom was actually like very negative and she was like, you aren't going to win. Like, I don't understand why you're doing this. And I was like, what? But um, I didn't listen to her. I ignored her and I believed in myself, which I think is super important. You guys got to believe in yourselves and apply because even if you don't win, it's a great experience. I promise you. Definitely. What about you, Dominique? Any hesitancy with you? Yeah, I was um, hesitant in that I didn't believe in myself. <laughs> so I was ne uh, the opposite. Um, or originally, I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like one, I had to find a, a team member, which thankfully you guys don't have that issue. Maybe like you don't have to find a team member this time. But um, it was actually my idea. And I was like searching for a team partner. And um, I did find a good um business partner and we're still business partners and we, it actually worked out pretty well but like the initial like um I think it's called um like I forget it's like a certain doubt like you don't think that you're good enough or that you can actually do it so if anyone is feeling that way I hope that you this is like confirmation that you can definitely do it no imposter syndrome over here is that what exactly that was the word that was what I was looking for imposter syndrome no, nobody is an imposter here. Agreed. Thank you, guys. That's really important. Um, so you apply, right? So you get through the application and process, you apply, and then they notify you that you've made it to the next round. What was that like? Did it really kind of help bolster your confidence, obviously? Yeah, you're shaking your heads. Okay, that's yeah, good. Because I think... Right. You know, there's there's rounds to this. So it's like making it to that next round, I have to assume, is kind of like a win in itself. Were yeah, you going to say like, something, Lisa? I was. Um, so I did uh, apply with two other team members, um, one of which we still do work together as well. And um, it's it was pretty much a like a we were like, okay, now we're taking this serious and we're gonna work really hard to win <laughs> and we're going to win. Like that was that that initial push that was like, oh yeah, we got this. So um, after that, cause we were taking it pretty casually and like, we're like, okay, we'll enter, let's see what happens. And once that happened, it was like, no, every Monday we're staring, staying up and we're not going to sleep. <laughs> like every Monday we're making sure we work on this pitch over and over and over until we nail it. So it was kind of that initial like fire under our butts <laughs> that really got us going. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and we're being we're being joined by George. I'll introduce him after the next question. So my next question is, you know, what were some of the challenges you guys faced as you went through the process? Right. I know for those of you who had to work with a teammate that can pose its own challenges, maybe resources, maybe, you know, getting that kind of mentorship. What did you guys face in terms of challenges as you prepared for pitch day? I think our business for my team was that, so we had three members, um, James Riley, me, Melissa Spiegelman, and Rochelle Jackson. And we come from like completely different walks of life. Like Rochelle is actually a law student. And at the time she was studying for her LSAT. James already has his master's and works full-time doing cancer research. I'm an undergraduate molecular biology student and I also work with him. So we had no time to practice. That was our main issue. No time to practice together. So. It was even harder because then boom, Corona happened. So now we had even less opportunities to meet up in person. That was our biggest issue. Yeah. What about yeah. you, Diamond? Was it Diamond? Yeah, I would say similarly, like um, time management. And of course, um, like was said previously, we had coronavirus. So it wasn't like we could meet at school. Um, so we had to do everything on Zoom. And um, thankfully, like the video part, we actually did before coronavirus. So we were able to like get us in like our actual environment beforehand. But um, like from everything on, it was remote. And I think the best thing that we did was stick to a schedule. We we're like every, I think it was Wednesday, we'll meet up at this time. And for this hour, we're gonna go through the PowerPoint and we're going to uh, like um, finalize our pitch. Got it. Lisa, anything you wanted to add? 
Uh, no, same. Um, I mean, luckily, all of this was in 2019, right before Corona, not right before Corona, corona but before Corona. And um, my thing is, we all had different work schedules. So mm. Monday nights were the only times we could meet. And we made sure that we didn't sleep because we had class the next day, we were all in the same pitch class. So we're like, okay, I, I was a bartender. So I worked nights pretty much, to, you know, the entire week, full time. So I was like, you know, we're going to do Monday nights. And if we do Monday nights, we're drinking a bunch of coffee and we're doing it throughout the entire night. Um, and that's pretty, that's what worked out with us. But a biggest, uh, one of our biggest challenges was different like ideas. I feel like um, because at that time we were kind of like, not forced, but we needed to have team members um, and everyone had different ideas and every had different, everyone had different visions. So um, to come together, especially just one day a week and really throw our ideas out there and then really like make it a brand or for at least the pitch. Um, that was a little challenging because it was just, you know, working with different people. But other than that, um, yeah, that was, I mean, that was our biggest challenge really getting together and that. Yeah, I would, you know, I think there, it's, there's two sides to this, right? Because I think it's, it's a good thing that people this year can apply as an as individuals so that they don't maybe bump up against that that dynamic that happens. Um, but also in the real world, you usually work as a team, right? Unless, you know, some entrepreneurs go it alone, which is totally amazing too. But, you know, getting that teamwork under your belt, there is something positive to be said oh, for that because um, you're no. gonna run up you need something? Else. So, um, so, so uh, I, before we move on, I want to introduce George Garcia. He's also a past winner. Um, his business, Wheat Paste, won first prize in 2018. So thanks for joining us, George. Give a little wave. Up, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Happy to be here. Good to see you. All right. So my next question um, is about, you know, sort of coming off of this question question but if you could go back in that time frame of when you um you know learned you're making it to the next round and you you know had all this time to work on your your pitch would, would you have done anything differently what is some advice that you have for these people you know on how to effectively use that time i know i keep hearing like time management and scheduling your time but you know even if they're applying as individuals what would you say to them I don't know, Melissa, if you or George, you just joined us. You're fresh. I'll, Tell I'll, us your I'll, perspective. I'll hop in here. I think um, the the one thing that I, I guess like we learned, we learned a lot. Like this is kind of weird, but we learned the most about what what we needed to do better on in between the two rounds of pitching. So you know, we spent a lot of time. Um, I mean, obviously just practicing, 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 but like we started changing our pitch a little bit in between the two rounds. Um, so like kind of putting, you know, the one, one big thing that I remember we were doing is like, we were just putting our, our mindset and like, we were putting our judges caps on and just like thinking through like what they were asking, the questions they were asking and how we can better position our pitch for the next round. Um, I don't remember what the question you asked Liz just now was, but I just started talking um you're answering it it's like you know advice you would give for this sort of the working period between rounds right when you're either between you know the semifinals or semifinals to finals like what what advice would you give people on how to use that time effectively yeah yeah so you're saying basically like learning from from the pitch you know if you're in the semifinals learning from that and um you know how what you need to change for the next round. Unfortunately, the people that won last year they didn't get a semifinals, mm -hmm. um, so that's a bummer because it is nice to to practice. But um, uh, all right, so I'm going to move ahead to another question. So we are the day of the pitch. Okay, tell me in a few words how you were feeling, Melissa. I'm going to start with you. How are you feeling that day? I actually have a really funny story. So okay, so I. I was sleeping, I woke up, right, ready for the pitch day, right? Walk into the bathroom, look in the mirror, boom, I'm covered in hives. So I start panicking. Immediately, I start panicking. Like all my confidence has left. So I'm freaking out. I'm like crying. Um, my boyfriend's mom had to help me like put like something on my face. So I wouldn't look crazy on Zoom. So I was, I was stressed. I got to say I was stressed. But you know, you just have to breathe. I learned I was just like, okay, no one can tell on Zoom. 
just breathe through your pitch. And I spoke nice and quietly and it worked out. Awesome. That is coming, you know, overcoming adversity. I love it. What mm -hmm. about you, Lisa? How did you feel that day? Um, so I, ours was in person. Um, so we were really nervous. Um, luckily, like we all had a sleepover that day and like we, we pitched and practiced all night. Um, so we felt prepared. We also did this like manifestation thing where, I mean, I put it on the background of my phone, Mabo Care is going to win 2019 pitch competition, like first prize. So we're like, let's focus on that. We are going to win. There's no one else. No, it's just us. We are going to win. We're going to win. And um, I think that helped a lot. We did a lot of practicing um, the day of like backstage and between uh, people pitching. And that helped too, because we saw other people pitch and we, um, we took, you know, bits and pieces from what we saw and, and applied it to ourselves. We, we changed the pitch up until we were up <laughs> like we were like no we need to fix this we need to fix this we nitpicked up until that moment so um just being open we we made sure that we were open to like criticizing ourselves and and fixing our mistakes and and you know doing the best we can pretty much so that's we were nervous but you know we kept that the eye on the prize type of thing got it and you improvise which is key Improve. Yes, yeah, improve. you have to improvise. Uh, George, you guys were in person too, so I'm sure that felt there was a little more gravitas behind the in-person experience, right? Yeah, it was definitely. Um, you know, the the one thing that I had to keep reminding myself is just like you're here to pitch, you're here to win. Like you just focus um, because there's like you know it's it's a hectic day. There's a lot going on. Um, you know, you're in school at the time. You're doing homework. You got this going on. You got that going on. You know, it's baseball season, whatever. There's a ton of things going on, but it's just like sitting down and like zoning in um, was, was the big thing for me. Uh, I, I made sure that like I was super prepared that day. I, I've told this a couple of times to a couple of classes is like I like from the moment I got there, I was zoned in, but um, I knew we were going to be eating that day. So I was even prepared. I brought my toothbrush. I brought my toothpaste. I like, you know, ultra, ultra prepared, um, made sure that like nothing was going to knock me off my game. Um, and part of that was, was like, uh, I guess it's like old baseball things like look good, feel good, play good. Um, it's like, same thing. Just, you gotta have, you gotta, you know, feel like you're up to the moment and everyone is, I mean, the, there's always these fake roadblocks that we put in our head, like, Oh, the judges are, I'm going to be so nervous in front of them, but just like knowing that they're human beings too. Um, and just like having that confidence to keep moving forward. That's, that's, what's going to help you win. It's, it's a confidence thing too. Yeah, and I, I think that's an important point. Like the judges are human and they want you to succeed. You know, they, they aren't looking for people to get up there and like fail. <laughs> they're, they're, they're really rooting for you. So I think that that's an important thing to keep in mind. Um, Dominique, I know you guys, didn't you guys have some tech issues day of? There was something going on. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, my partner, his connection, I guess it was like very, like a lot of people on at the same time. So we ended up having to go to the um, entrepreneurship center and um, we set up there and everything was good. Like, of course that was a little nerve wracking, but everything, you know, went plan as planned. Um, I would suggest, um, of course, practice, practice, practice. But like for me personally, like the day of, we did like one or two runs and that was it. Like, cause for me, if I were to keep going, uh, like, or multiple times, I would get nervous. So once you do it once or twice and it's seamless, then, you know, that builds the confidence. You're like, okay, I know this I've practiced before. Like, you know, you didn't wait till the day of to practice and, um, the day of you just relax. And this is me for like tests for anything. Like the day of is to just relax and, um, like build up that confidence because you already know this, like the day of, and this is of course, after you've done your research, you've done the perfect pitch um, deck, you've practiced even more. And then the day of is the day when you're just supposed to show all that you know. If, I don't know if that makes sense, but like for me, I don't like to stress <laughs> like on the day of tests or the day of pitches. Um, and I would just um, suggest to you all that the day of, um, we also did a lot of, um, they call it um, power 
positions and it's like stretching and like, you know, going for like a jog or something like get your adrenaline up. Um, and of course it like reduces stress, but um, at the same time, like gets you um, excited in a good way for the task. That's, that's amazing advice. I think it, it also, you know, kind of goes to the whole um, thought about being present right in the moment. It's so hard. I mean, I know I've been through, you know, getting married and having kids and you, you kind of almost like black out because you're like, I don't remember what happened because you're so nervous, but it's important to just remember, like I'm here and I deserve to be here and I've worked really hard to get here. So I need to be in the moment and enjoy this experience because it's not going to happen again. So I think that's like really, really good advice. Um, so, you know, we guys have kind of alluded on this, but I want to, you know, if, is there anything that you felt like when you were pitching, you forgot to do that? You're like, oh no, I, you know, I, I wish I'd done this or conversely that something that you were so fixated on and you were so nervous about that never even like came up and you were like, oh, I wish I wouldn't have been so worried about this, you know? Is there anything, either one of those that come to mind for any of you guys? Yes. Melissa, you're shaking your Yes. What happened? <laughs> so we were pitching and like, as I've said, you know, several times, like me and James, like James is an actual molecular biologist. He has his master's degree in this. He really understands yeast. But while we were pitching, after we pitched as like a Q&A session. So during the Q&A session, they asked, you know, like, what is your background that makes you confident that you'll be able to like make like good wine and stuff? And like, obviously James answered because he has like the most experience with yeast, but he alluded to the fact that we're both, you know, he's like trained in molecular biologist, has worked in cancer research, has done all this like stuff with like beer and wine. He never said that he was actually a molecular biologist. So our time ran out and I noticed, and I don't recommend doing this, but I noticed we were still in the pitch room with all the judges. So I just go, James, I can't believe you forgot to mention that we were both molecular biologists. And at that moment, Carly realized we were still in the room and she was like, oh, I'll remove you guys. So you guys can talk amongst yourselves. And I was like, I did it. I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you have, you have to get your plugs in for mm -hmm. sure. Um, anybody else have anything that they were kind of like, oh, what was it, Lisa? Um, well, I mean, we started our pitch with a pretty like controversial like um, first sentence. And it was like, who here likes a clean vagina, right? <laughs> and we were so scared that that was not gonna come off well <laughs> to the audience. And we were so scared people were not gonna react to that, but they did. So that was something that we were all nervous with. And that happened. And once when we, once we got over that, we were just, it, it flowed pretty well. But I'd like to even mention um, our first pitch for the first round was pretty much flawless, but our second pitch with the real judges was um, kind of choppy. And uh, we stumbled over our words and, you know, it's really not even about having that perfect pitch. Like we're human and everyone makes mistakes, but it's more about like making sure you get that message across, like mm -hmm. make sure you communicate what your business is. That's really all you're really uh, should be concerned about. It doesn't matter if you're jumbling up your words or if you're messing up a little bit on the slide. Like it's not that same. That's one thing that you just need to understand from the beginning. Um, we're all human. So uh, it's not as nerve wracking as real life. I, Sorry, I, go ahead. That, I was going to say that's such a, such a huge point. And I think that this is something that you will encounter throughout your career. If I believe you and I believe your mission and I believe in what you're doing, you could put, you know, one slide up and I'd still be like winner yeah. because if, you know, it's, it's less about it's, you know, the, the flashiness and all that for me personally. And I've, you know, judged some things in the past and I've been on the receiving end of getting pitches right in my career. And it was like, if I believed you and I believed in what you're selling me and I can tell you're passionate about it, then that goes so far. And also, and I think Judy, I'd mentioned this to you. It's like, what's your story? I really want to know your story and how you came up with this and like why, again, this is a passion project for you. That to me is really important and it resonates. So um, yeah, I think that that's, that's a wonderful advice, Lisa. Um, so, 
Okay, so I, you know, we're, I don't want to take up too much more time because I do want to leave a few minutes for Q and A, but I want to go to, you know, now they've told you that you you've won, right? They've announced you as the winner. What, what did that feel like? What went through your mind when you were, you know, named as a, a winner, or finalist, or you know, some type of prize? How did you feel, George? How did you feel that day? Oh man, it was crazy. I felt like, um, you know, the Mr. Krabs meme where he's like looking all around and <laughs> spinning. That's like what it felt like. Um, and, but like, it was like a great feeling. And also it was kind of like, um, it was motivational. It was like, oh shoot, like these people who are like legit business people, you know, leaders, um, they believed in us. They believed in what we're doing. They believed in, in us personally as well. Like we, we have the chops to do this. Um, and like, it was like just a huge momentum that we were then able to just like bring forward and just like keep moving that forward. Um, it was awesome. It was, it was really one of the wildest moments. Like I can't remember, like it, it, it was definitely like a blackout kind of thing. Like, Oh my God. But it was like, awesome. Um, can't like, I would do this again just to try to chase that feeling. Cause it was just awesome. It was incredible. Yes, that's motivation enough. What about, how did you feel that day? Um, actually, it's funny, because um, Nicole and Kenna and I still talk about it to this day, like, we knew we were going to win. We just knew it, because we had, it was like we had, we didn't actually know, obviously, but we, um, we had this, like, tunnel vision, and it was like, we're either I mean it's there's no way we're not like that's how we kind of saw it um so we were so we were obviously shocked because no we did not know we were gonna win but we were just like aha we got this we did it you know and um and I think that was because we worked so hard and um and we knew our pitch was really good and and we I mean I we did our thing so <laughs> um and that's kind of different than I think anyone like you know other people would say like just because we we all three agreed okay we know we're gonna win and we were just like yes that's confirmation that we worked hard enough to win and that's where that feeling of satisfaction came from it wasn't more like and, and obviously it was shocking and super exciting and we just like had no idea like same thing Mr. Krabs meme like we were like did not know how to handle everything but um once we once we settled we were just like thank goodness like we you know, thank God we worked so hard, pretty much. Totally. So what about Melissa? What, do you, what were your, your feelings after winning? Maybe it's because I found out I won on um, like a computer. Like it was just like posted. Maybe it's because of that. But like, I felt good. Like all the anxiety like left my body. But honestly, it didn't like feel real. It didn't feel like it was actually happening. So I had like a super delayed reaction where the next day I was really excited. So like if you win and you don't feel like, you know, super hyped, don't feel bad. Like it'll come, it'll come. The next day, best day of my life. Like it, it was beautiful. Like I, I just felt so happy, like so content. Like I actually did something. I actually won something. And uh, it felt so nice. Love it. Um, I think my um, win is unique in that I, I didn't win the first place prize we won second and I'm not gonna lie I was a sore loser <laughs> I was so upset because um like Lisa I, I just knew I just knew we were gonna get first place I just knew like we had the best pitch the best story like we were just gonna win first place and when we didn't of course I was happy um for the second place I was happy for the prize because you know I could have won nothing but um I think that just put like a special fire under me so like for those who don't you know you know, sky's the limit think big you know you're gonna win first that's how you have to think but when the competition is said and done and, and you haven't won first place just use that as like fuel to like prove yourself and to like just to do better because um you know one I know for me it doesn't show that you don't deserve first place it just um you know maybe just have to tweak some things or uh, like similar to Lisa like I'm into like fate and destiny like that just is not your destiny that's not part of your plan for this moment but that doesn't mean that you can't learn or network or you know just um do better for next time and 
make that first place at another pitch competition or um we actually did end up getting a grant afterwards so like you know god has a way of like you know equaling things out but um yeah for those who maybe not win first place don't let that stop you i think that's great because just I, i've been working with you closely obviously over the past year and you've you didn't let that hold you back at all like if anything it, i think it may it probably like you said kind of incentivized you to even go further and like be like oh no i'm gonna show you guys so um yes so there there are a couple questions that came through in the chat and i'm just gonna pause on those for a second um because i want to just quickly round out the couple more questions i had for the panel um so to go back to what Diamonique said, you know, you enter this competition, you win, and then it's like, oh, great, what do I do now? Like, you're like, I won all this money, but this was just for like a pitch. I didn't know, you know, now I actually have to like start a business. What? So that's gotta be such like an overwhelming feeling, I'm sure. Um, and I, I definitely wanna have like a follow-up, um, you know, complete conversation about this, the, this whole thing at a different time. But, you know, what are some of the things that you guys did right away after winning the money were you like okay I need to you know get a website I need to hire a lawyer I need to do like what were some of those sort of first steps that you took because I think it's really important to not get overwhelmed and to kind of bite off little bite-sized things that you can do um, in order to get the business going so um, you know Melissa what did, what did you do kind of right after winning the money so for, for a wine company, um, you actually have to have, it's a lot of uh, government things, you know, like we have to apply for a liquor distributor license. We have to apply for the Surgeon General's um, label, like for just so we can have like sell alcohol. Um, we have to apply for time. So for us, it was a lot of like just filing paperwork and dealing with the government. I think we're a little bit different though, because like we couldn't, like legally, you're only allowed to produce 200 gallons of wine for a year for yourself, but you can't sell that. So in order for us to like actually ramp up production, we had to do a lot of legal things first, sadly. You know, it has to happen. What mm -hmm. about you, Lisa? What did you guys do? Um, well, it's actually funny. Our first thing was to buy a domain, but someone at the pitch competition actually stole our name and filed a domain. Yeah, uh, filed the domain name and we had to pay them $700 to get our domain back. Uh, so that was our first thing. Someone stole our domain. So definitely, if you were planning to pitch, I would say, um, honestly, you file your domain for however it's probably like a dollar or something if it's super unique file your domain first before the pitch competition because anyone can pretty much like use it for ransom kind of thing um but that was the first thing we did um so that was like a, a little obstacle we needed to uh go through but other than that uh we had to file our our c corp so we had to figure out how to register our business and uh business bank account and, um, and then we started contacting manufacturers right away on how to create the products. We actually pivoted too. So we didn't start with a feminine wash. We started with another supplement. So um, it was kind of like, I mean, even still it's a year later or almost two. And it's like, I have this business. <laughs> like, you know, it was overwhelming and it's still overwhelming and it's going to be overwhelming, but it's honestly super, super worth it. So definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, what about you, Dominique? What did you guys do first? So um, I would recommend definitely, um, like Lisa said, domain, definitely LLC, because um, you want to make sure that your name is um, valid, like no one else has that name. Um, and then after we received the money, we actually did a lot of pop-ups, um, one or a couple through Montclair State. So um, if you have like a product like that you can sell, I would definitely look into like farmer's markets or pop-ups or like just ways to get your um, business out there and into the hands of customers. Um, and um, what else? Uh, social media, uh, especially now because everything's digital. Like there's not much like um, advertising other places. So like Facebook, Instagram, like, of course, once you have um, your business goals and your um, 
like you're set on what you want to sell and you have um, some customers and you, and you know that that's what they like and people are coming back to you, then you can start um, marketing to um, others in the local area or nationally if, if it's shippable. Perfect. And George, what about you? What'd you guys do? Um, we definitely started getting like our ducks in a row um, for the, the like company side of stuff, like the corporation side of stuff. Um, we immediately also just like started talking with mentors and like making sure that um, we had people that we could lean on to like guide us in the right direction. Um, that's like, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't have figured out. I mean, we could have figured out like half the stuff we had to do, um, you know, with a Google search, but like the other half of stuff is like, you need to talk to like somebody who knows that. And we were lucky enough to have Professor Malaga um, like help guide us. So, you know, just having um, a resource and making sure that we had a, a great relationship with him and be just like he's the right guy to like talk to um those were just like immediate immediate things for us to take care of very very good i think building your your team of mentors is really really important whether they're friends and family you know experts in the area or msu faculty whatever just build a team of people who are going to basically have your back when you have questions or when you run up against a roadblock or whatever, just to bounce ideas off of, because we know a lot of these ideas don't happen in a, you know, in a silo, like you need to bounce ideas to make sure that you're coming up with the best product or service possible. Um, so last question, if there was one piece of advice that you would give to people who are considering or going through this pitch process, what would it be? I'll go protect to George. Yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Melissa, Melissa, you go. Please protect yourself. Like, please file your L. Please, like, we filed our LLC. We filed our trademarks all before the competition. Sadly, we did not file our domain. Um, our competition was a little different. So, uh, contestants could not watch contestants. So, it was only when we pitched with our new name um, that wasn't, they didn't have a website yet. Um, the only people who were in the room were the judges and the other hedge funders and someone still took our domain. So, and they, we figured out they took our domain while the judges were deliberating. So it was really, it, it taught us a lot. It taught us to not really trust people. Like you can't, please, please, please. I know, I don't know if they win domains this year. I'm not totally sure. Uh, we won like a year domain for our thing. But please file the domain beforehand. You know, you don't want to, they were trying to sell it for a thousand dollars to us. We ended up just changing our name. So we're garbage wine labs now. We're different. But please protect yourself, please. Very, very good advice. I think that's, you know, I didn't know all of this was happening. I this is news to me, but um, yes, I think in life it is just protect, protect your IP, protect your IP for sure. And your domain. What about you, Lisa? What would you what's the one piece of advice you would give? Uh, do it, even if you're afraid to <laughs> just do it and um, pitch it and you're going to grow no matter what. Um, this whole experience is going to make you grow as a person. At the end of the day, it's going to make you a better business person. It's going to make you a better um, presenter, performer, everything. <laughs> it's going to really boost your confidence. I feel like I've changed completely. I'm not the same person I was before the pitch competition. Um, and it, it really prep me for life. So my one piece of advice is just do it and definitely get a mentor. <laughs> do it and get a mentor. That's it. <laughs> uh, Diamond, what's your piece of advice? Um, so before I said, you know, you definitely want to get your product out, if it's a product or a service out to the customers. Um, so you can get feedback. That's really important because a lot of times we can think that our businesses are great and, you know, they could be, but, um, get into customers can you can tweak it in a way that it's like bullet like bulletproof and um effective and also um don't be afraid to uh spend the money so like i sat on mine for like a good six months and um you know it'll always be there if you like save it but and you don't learn from your mistakes. Like I, when I did start spending the money, I used it in very efficient ways, but in some ways I didn't, but I now know. So uh, when I do get more money and I, you know, from the customers or grants or whatever, I now know what to do. So um, spend wisely 
but also don't be afraid to spend the money. Don't um, like, you know, hoard the money. Um, the money is meant to be spent. And as long as you spend exactly. it on your business, <laughs> and as long as you spend it on your business and you, um, like uh, everyone said, like mentors, always talk to them um, and let run it by them. You know, does this sound like a good idea? Um, spend your money wisely. Perfect. George, what, it, what what's your one piece of advice? Two, two if, I could, if I could, if I could. Oh, okay, I'll give you two, I'll give you two. No, the, it, <laughs> if, it's gonna be different this year where like people can pitch solo. So like I have kind of different advice for, for two different groups. Like if you're, if you're gonna have a team, um, make sure that you're, um, you know, you're like this with your team and like you understand, like, you know, make sure that they're ready when the going gets tough, tough gets going kind of stuff. You know, shit's gonna hit the fan. It's not all gonna be hunky-dory forever. Like it's gonna get ugly at some point. Um, so like make sure that those are the people that, it, make sure first off they're willing to go to war and like second off like that they're the ones that you want next to you when you go to war um because like it's gonna it's gonna be bumpy eventually um and then the other one is um kind of like off of Di diamondiques it's like launch fast and like learn fast and you know the the quicker you can get stuff out there into people's hands the quicker you're gonna learn um don't you know try to be a perfectionist in the beginning just you know qu uh, quantity is better than quality in the beginning um so the, the quicker you can get out there and then learn and pivot and you know make your tweaks and whether that's to team to product to to yourself you know you you have to just learn as quick as you can or else you're gonna you're gonna sink so um definitely just learn fast um and make sure those those people are ready to go to war with you yeah i think that's awesome uh what you said uh I, I always get sayings wrong, but I think there's a saying like uh, perfectionism is the enemy of innovation or something like that. If you wait and you try to be perfect, you're never going to do it, right? You're never perfect, right? Just get it out there, iterate, 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 brainstorm, bounce, all those things. So very, very good advice. Now I'm going to go to the questions. We have a few questions. Um, Judy says, can we go over the timeline for this year and what is expected for each stage? It's definitely on the website, Judy, but I think this one is probably good for, we can follow up and I can send it to you in an email. So it's just very clear to you of like what you need at each stage. But I can just say, you know, broadly applications are due April 1st. We'll let people know, um, we'll notify semi semifinalists April 8th. Um, and then in that time between, you know, April 8th to May 4th, we'll be doing a lot of coaching. We can probably see if some of these guys will come back to talk about specific things. I really just wanna make that a really good time of like networking and coaching and refining and getting help, right? And then the semifinals are gonna be held virtually May 5th. Um, and then, you know, that next week, more coaching, more practicing, and then the finals are May 12th. But in terms of like requirements, that's all on the, in the, uh, on the website in the, uh, the write-up, but yeah, I, I have can... I have a piece of paper that has also the uh, workshops on it and everything. I was just wondering with the application, it's just really we just need to um, send in that um, executive executive summary form, right? There doesn't need executive. to be any there doesn't need to be any um, video or slides or anything. Just the URL, correct? No, if you if you look on the actual application, it'll mm -hmm. tell you what you need. It's the executive summary. You have to sign the agreement, and there's a two minute video. Oh, okay. All right. That's I just yeah. Okay. Don't stress about the video. You got this. You can do no, it. No, I'm okay, and I already got the URL, so I'm good. <laughs> okay, great, great. Um, but I, you know, as always, reach out if you have more questions specific to timelines and requirements. Um, okay, Becky asks, who is eligible to enter the competition? So this year, it is just MSU students and alumni. Last year, it was open to the public, and we had a spe special um, prize just for community members. Hopefully, one day, we'll get back to that. George, I know, you know, you and I worked a lot on that, um, and it, I thought it was great, but again, you know, with COVID and, you know, things have tightened up across the universe, right? So we need to just, you know, we had to go away from that community part of it, but my goal, you know, ultimately is to go back and involving community businesses in Montclair, Little Falls, you know, in the surrounding area to enter as well. Cause I think it's, again, it's just a great way to practice your pitch, even if you're not a student. Um, 
And then also what resources did you use to fill in the gaps of your pitch that you struggled with, whether it was financial forecasting or presenting? That's a really good question. Do any of you guys have any, like a POV on this? Like, you know, maybe you weren't an expert in something. It looks like Lisa, you have, an, you have something to say. Yeah, so I actually, um, I had a friend that pitched at Rowan in one first place. So I, I got a outside point of view. Um, so I got a, a previous pitch winner uh, for even if it was a different school, same thing, um, to really just, you know, check out our pitch and and give us pointers um, while we were pitching and, and give us some insight that we didn't even realize that we were missing. So a big thing was, um, yeah, we, we contacted people that have done this before. And I think that's re that was really helpful for our pitch and ended up being um, obviously really successful at the end, so. Yeah, did any of you have, um, you know, any blind spots where you were like, you know, for me, for example, I would have a huge issue with the financials. I'd be so scared, like, that's not my bread and butter. How do I talk about that? So. I don't know, George, did you have anything like that where you guys had to lean on other people or? Yeah, you know? we, we kind of had like, I don't know what, what, where we were at, like we didn't have any like hard, like cold, hard projections on like what we were gonna do, but we did have like some uh, like information on like how we were going to get to making money. So it was like kind of just like outlining, you know, from A to Z, how we think right now, how we're thinking we're gonna make some money eventually. Um, but I think like the big part of the financial aspect of like the pitch is like, um, just making, like, they just want to know that like, you're at least thinking of it. It doesn't have to be right. You know, it's going to be wrong. 99.99% of the time, any projection you make is going to be wrong. So just like the judges were really just looking for us, like at least thinking forward to the point where, um, you know, we're going to make these decisions. Um, and then, uh, the other, the other like gap for us was that um, we didn't have a live product. So um, making sure that we had a lot of um, interviews, just like potential customer interviews and like anecdotal evidence um, as to like why what we're building is gonna work. Uh, that was like a, a big thing for us as well. Um, thank you. We have another question from Sienna. Um, for those of you who have not taken the preparing to pitch and launch your startup course, what resources would you recommend to establish an effective pitch? That's a very good question. Anyone have a thought on that? Yeah, so um, me and my partner actually didn't really attend any of the material, any of the, you know, any of those lectures. So we actually went to YouTube and we found YouTube videos to learn how to pitch. And one thing that was like really cool was that like you get um, flashcards and you kind of make like an outline of everything you want to hit, like every portion of your business. And then you can kind of just like move those flashcards around, you know, and it's like a really interactive experience and you'll really learn your material doing that. So I recommend just you know, hitting the internet. They have a lot of information on there. Yeah, yeah I always, George, George shared one in the chat. Why Combinator? Yeah, yeah, there's there's like a plethora of videos and articles and all this stuff out there for every little question that you have on a pitch and a business and all that stuff. So I, I highly recommend um, checking that stuff out for sure. Yeah, definitely check it out in the chat. Thank you. I also think just like watching a bunch of TED Talks is cool because, mm -hmm. right, they're pitching that's like a very quick pitch, whether it's a story or whatever, you know, pitching is storytelling. So if you can become a really good storyteller, there's so many resources out there, whether it's TED, TED Talks. Um, there's another one that I'm blanking on right now, but I, I, that can teach you how to become like a really effective storyteller. So um, yeah. I have one question. Yes, Jamil. Yes, I wanted to basically ask, cause um, all of you guys are like new entrepreneurs. What does it feel like to be like a new entrepreneur? I know Lisa, you said you were working as a bartender while doing this. How does it feel to like own your own company now? Are you, do you guys plan on going back to work if you guys aren't working? And how far do you guys plan to take this basically entrepreneurship road? Um, so 
luckily because of not luckily actually but because of covid um my old job closed down so i hadn't worked since and um i just got a part-time now just because it's better to have money in my pocket because i've been reinvesting everything back into the business um but it feels really cool and what um something to prepare you for is that if you do want to be an entrepreneur and if this is the career path you want to take it is all on you <laughs> like everything all the responsibility um and and that's either a great thing and it's it's both a great thing and a really scary thing um so every it's nothing like i've ever done before and i've had a lot of office jobs and little things um but it's a great feeling to know that I have satisfied customers out there that are looking at me and my brand and watching me grow and expecting us to grow. Um, so it's really, really rewarding. And it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of agency. You need your, you know, like this is all you and this is what you're representing and your business is everything. So um, that's my biggest thing. When I'm packing orders, I'm just like, this is so surreal. <laughs> like I'm packing orders right now, you know, and it's, um, every day. Um, and, and I see, I'm seeing it grow before my eyes and it's just so, it's so cool. So, um, I don't know, it's just a super rewarding feeling. So it feels great. It's scary, but it feels great. <laughs> um, Ananda, I, I see that you had a question or you have your hand raised. Did you want to, did you have a question to ask? Yeah, I have a question. What advice do you guys have for um, people who are like just in the beginning stages of the comp, like about to pitch their idea or, or coming up with ideas? I know for me, I literally just came up with my idea last weekend. So it's kind of like a lot because the competition is in like 16 days. So do you guys have any advice? Hone in on your story, on your mission. Okay. That's the most important thing because that's what you're pitching because at the end of the day even when we pitched none of us really had a business yet um and it doesn't turn into a business until you really get customers kind right. of thing uh, so you only have your story until you start selling that's really kind of what it is um so find out your story dream it up in my opinion and then and that's the most important thing to th to really think about right now let's get it and put write it down thank you so much if I could just add though, but like also like think about the problem you're trying to solve too. You gotta, gotta get the problem because once you get that problem down, I promise you it'll be easier to develop your solution and to develop your dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a huge part. Yeah, I was gonna say the same exact thing. Like, I think we've all seen those infomercials where like they show like the cabinet falling down and it's so dramatic, but like it um stays in your mind so in a way you gotta really um talk up that problem and then make your product as like the hero to save the day so like and that's all part of like storytelling is like this is why we are super man or super woman and i i think that's a really really important part right because i look at the three of you and you know george you too i mean but you solve so many problems so not one specific problem, but I, I look at you and you're, what you guys are offering is so much bigger than a product or a service, right? You were talking to social, women's issues, issues of equity and social justice with you, Dominique. Melissa, you're talking to environmental issues. These are big issues. These are big problems. And you guys are solving those problems with your services and your goods and your products. So that to me, like I'm getting chills just thinking about it because that's the story, right? The story is like, I'm really trying in my own unique way to solve a huge issue that faces all of us or you know a lot of us. So I think that's a really, really, really important point to all of this. So thank you guys. Um, so before I let everybody go, um, again, the pitch competition, please applications are due April 1st, get those applications in prize pool is $30,000. Um, so, you know, we're looking to fund more, more businesses, more companies, maybe with a little less seed money so that we can just get you started down the path. Um, it's open to MSU students and alumni. Hopefully next year we can open it a backup to the community, but for now, MSU students and alumni. Um, before we let you go, guys, give me one more pitch about where we can find your business. 
Melissa, where can we find Garbage Wine? Where can we interact with you? I am so sorry, guys, but until we're able to get our liquor, our winery license, you can't really interact with Garbage Wine. I'm very sorry, guys. We'll send out that update once the liquor <laughs> license is okay. Uh, Mavo Care, Lisa, where can we find Mavo Care? So you can find us on um, Facebook, Instagram at Mavo Care, and also at MavoCare.com. Um, uh, slash shop. So we have two products now that are out. Awesome. Congrats. And you're getting on Amazon soon too. So woohoo. All right, like Kennedy, week. what about you? Where do we find solos? Yeah, you can find me on solosfood.com and we ship to New Jersey. At first we were shipping like in the surrounding areas, but then the carriers got a little crappy. So we're just um, delivering a shipping to New Jersey for right now. Um, and you can check us out, check out our menu, check out um, our Instagram, TikTok, um, LinkedIn, all, all, every one of them is Solos Food. So S-O-L-O-S Food. Awesome. And then, you know, George, you're a serial entrepreneur. What are you working on these days? What do, what do you want to tell us about? Right now, I'm not working on anything too crazy right now. Um, I'm working for a little startup. Um, we're called Air Subs. We're just, we're making tools for um, internet creators to like monetize their Zoom and on demand and stuff like that. Um, but if you want to check out what we're doing, airsubs.com, um, we're, uh, we're just, we're just doing some fun stuff in the, in the creator world, which is, is cool. Um, but thank you guys. Thank for, thank you, Liz, for having all of us. This is awesome. Um, I love, I love seeing everybody and talking pitch competition. It's the best ever. Can't recommend it enough. Thanks. Thank you guys so much for coming today. Sorry to keep you a little bit over. Uh, I'm so, so proud of all of you and just, it's so fun to watch all of you guys grow and just really do amazing things. So thank you guys for being with us. And again, if any of you are entering the pitch competition and you have questions, definitely uh, email me at entrepreneurs at montclair.edu or go to our website, montclair.edu backslash entrepreneurs. All things entrepreneurs. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody for coming today. Bye thank guys. You, Liz. All right, take care. Bye everybody. Take care everyone.